Any discussion on data modeling wouldn't be complete without mentioning wide tables, or one big table as they're sometimes called. So wide tables are single denormalized tables with a wide range of columns. We've got a lot of columns, that's why it's called the wide table, but it's denormalized. So as a reminder, when we think about designing databases, we often use normalization to reduce data redundancy, like repeating ourselves, and to improve data integrity. So we've only got data in one place. When an update is needed, we've only got to change it in that one area, not in 50 areas. So here's what a normalized set of tables could look like. We've got customer's data with their name and address, and then order's data, like with an order date, and order items. So there could be multiple items in the given order. And we're separating out the address, keeping that separate for customers, so we don't have to list the address on every time or every item that a customer orders. Could be 50 or 60 times potentially, or even more possibly. Now, wide tables go counter to that. You're actually denormalizing, and so naturally creating some redundancy. So in this case, we combined those three tables together, denormalize them, and so each row has all the data for a particular order item. So it includes the name of the customer, the item they ordered, what the date of the order was, also their address and city, and so on. So I'd be thinking, like, why would we want to introduce this redundancy potentially? So there's a few advantages of wide tables, denormalizing. So it's going to give you simpler queries. It's going to eliminate the need for joins, multiple joins. And then it could be faster performance, especially for reads, since data is already in one place. It's centralized. Also for analytics convenience. So it might be easier to spot patterns if the data is already in one table. There's no need to explore multiple tables as we think about generating insights. Now, there's obviously challenges of this, which is why we normalize in many cases, is that this requires storage. It requires more space, thus increasing costs. And it's doing that because there's more redundancy, there's duplication of data, which could be problematic. And then there's challenging updates, so changes must be propagated throughout the table. So you're not just updating a customer's address in one place, potentially, could be in 50. And as the table grows, it might become more unwieldy. It's difficult to scale, potentially. Now, one of the reasons why wide tables are becoming still more popular, though, is because of the cloud. Cloud platforms are, are becoming really cost-effective and almost infinitely scalable. So we can get these advantages of wide tables at a much cheaper cost, and it's much more easy to implement. And so you'll start hearing about likely wide tables more often, but it's important to be familiar with the advantages, and also the challenges. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the subscribe button. And if you're interested in a SQL cheat sheet, you can find one over at codybaldwin.com.